Okay, so let's look at uh, two-point function in in an interacting theory. Uh, I mean, we, I will be looking at two-point function in uh, scalar field theory, and this analysis will be uh, non-perturbative, meaning I will not use any Feynman diagrams. I will not make use of any perturbation theory, and will show you what I have already uh, told you earlier that if you look at the two point function in the Fourier space, then it takes the following form that it has a pole at physical mass m p. Okay. You see that when q square is equal to m p square, this blows up that is a and it is a simple pole. Okay. And of course, you remember that in free theory also you had a simple pole at the physical mass and their physical mass was same as the mass parameter that appeared in the Lagrangian, but it was only i over q square minus m square plus plus i epsilon in free theory, but here you also have a z sitting here okay? and that z uh, is what is the residue of this pole okay? and then there are other terms which are not singular when q square goes to m p square and this is the result which I want to arrive at now. Okay, and uh, this is what we will start now. So, let us go here. So, the goal is to look at that is vacuum, okay. my setup is not so good here, and then time ordered product of these fields phi x and phi y, which are your. Uh, fields that appear in the Lagrangian, these elementary fields. Okay. But I will um, do it in more generality, I will not take them as to be the elementary fields that appear in the Lagrangian, but I will use allow these fields to be also composite. Okay. For example, um, let, let me denote by phi the elementary field. this is the one which appears in your Lagrangian. Okay. So, phi of x, but you could also construct operators like this. You could have phi x times phi x. So, at the same space time point x, you have this, this product okay, of two fields, which is also written as phi square of x and you could have phi cube of x and so forth, okay, which would be just uh, product of three fields at the same space time point. So, let us say these are n times and this is what is phi n of x. Okay. So, that is uh, that is what I am allowing here. So, I am saying phi of x could be any of these. Okay. It could be an elementary field phi Okay, or it could be a composite field where you have several elementary fields uh, at the same space time point. Okay, and um, if if you were to look at this object in perturbation theory and draw a Feynman diagram, okay, suppose I want to look at um, this object omega time model product of phi cube of x phi cube of y. Okay, we have done this kind this analysis in the previous course. So, you remember if it was just phi of x and phi of y or phi of x 1, phi of x 2, phi of x 3 and so forth, then at each space time point for uh, you draw this dot which labels the space time point x and then you have one tick coming out of it okay. and that tick corresponds to the fact that you have a one field acting on that phi. Okay. That is what we have learned in the previous course, okay, when we were analyzing the Green's functions and uh, drawing the Feynman diagrams. But here, because I have three fields at the same point, instead of one point coming out, I should have three points coming out. Okay. Or you can think of it as x 1, x 2 and x 3, three points each with one tick 
okay, and then in the limit that x 1, x 2 and x 3 they go to x they all merge into 1. Okay, so, this gives you basically this, this is what I am drawing here. So, for point x there will be 3 such ticks coming out, for point y there will be corresponding 3 ticks coming out and then you connect them in all possible ways uh, putting vertices depending on at what order in perturbation theory you are looking at and draw Feynman diagrams. Okay, for example, one of the Feynman diagrams would be because I am doing phi 4 theory would be this. Okay. That is a 4 point vertex here 1, 2, 3 and 4, 4 lines coming out. Okay, so, that is a factor of lambda here and you could also have the same thing here another factor of lambda and then something else happens okay, whatever diagram you wish to draw according to the rules of, of the Feynman rules. So, it would have this kind of structure okay, and similarly for other things, but I do not wish to do perturbation theory as I said and I want to look at this object in a non perturbative manner. Okay, so, I will proceed with that and keeping in mind that phi could be a composite field as well. Okay, so, what I do is I first insert a complete set of uh, a complete set and I will not um, look at the time order product to begin with I will just look at this. Okay, so, I have dropped the time order product uh, sorry time ordering that I will bring in later. Again okay, I will analyze this object first. So, I insert a complete set which I will denote by cat n. So, it becomes summation over n omega sorry Um, phi x, then this identity phi y omega. Okay, I have inserted a complete set. Now I can take this these uh, states get n to be eigenstates of the momentum operator p mu. Okay, and I can do so because I have uh, uh, in space time symmetry in this problem. So, there is a conserved um, momentum that exists and because it is an Hermitian operator its eigenstates would form a complete set. Okay. So, what is this ket n? Ket n is an eigenstate of operator p mu. Okay, this pen is So, that is what I choose for um, eigenstates, uh, I choose for this uh, states cat n and insert in here. Now, I will appeal to um, uh, uh, this uh, space time symmetry, uh, this invariance under space time translations and write phi of x. Okay. Uh, in terms of phi of 0. So, let us look at this object omega phi x ket n this is omega e to the i p dot x where p is the momentum operator phi at 0 e to the minus i p dot x then you have this ket n. Okay. Then we have assumed that our vacuum does not change, does not, okay, or, or it has a, it has an eigenvalue zero. That way also you can see, okay, if it has an eigenvalue zero, then 
P acting on vacuum will give you 0 and this is just omega okay, because this gives identity. Then you have phi of 0. Okay. This is an, uh, ket n is an eigenstate of operator P. So, it gives you e to the minus i p n dot x. Okay, this subscript n denotes the uh, tells that this p n is the moment uh, is the momentum of ket n okay, and because that is a complex number I have just pulled it out. Okay, it does not have to be sitting in here it is not an operator anymore. Okay, so, that is what I get and uh, the same thing you can do for this one this factor and phi y omega is um, n phi 0 omega e to the i p y dot sorry p n dot y. Okay, using the same argument. So, what do I have then for this um, this object this becomes um, okay, this is a bit difficult. So, this becomes Okay, it's not convenient. I'll go to the next page. Let's see whether I can just copy it. Okay, it will be faster. So I'll just insert that. Um, insert all the results which I have found. So omega phi of x phi of y um, and omega again is summation over n. And then what do you have? You have omega phi of 0 n and then you have again omega phi of I, I can just put a mod square okay, these are complex conjugates of each other this uh, this one here and that one here these factors are complex conjugates. So, I will just put a mod square times e to the minus i p n dot x minus y that is correct. Okay, so, you see that because we have translational uh, invariance under uh, in, uh, we have this symmetry translational symmetry this object on the left hand side does not depend independently on x and y. Okay. It only depends on this difference x minus y. Okay. It is not a uh, function of x separately and y separately, but the result uh, the, the function the functional form depends only on the difference between x and y. Okay. That is due to our uh, translational symmetry. Now, what I will do is I will write this down in, a, in the following form. I want to write it as a integral. So, I just put it like this integral d 4 q where um, where you have integral over q naught, q 1, q 2 and q 3 running from minus infinity to plus infinity. Okay. So, d 4 q and then times e to the minus i q dot x minus y Okay. that is the form I want this object to have and you can already see why because you know this will be like a Fourier transform okay, whatever right I whatever I write here in the blank space would be the Fourier transform of the object on the left hand side. Okay. So, I am trying to give it that form. Now, to arrange that I should have um, this piece is there anyway. So, I should write it here and summation over it. Okay. Um, omega sorry omega 
phi of 0 n modulus square. Okay. Now, what should happen when I integrate over d 4 q? When I integrate over d 4 q, this q should get replaced by p n okay. and that integral should also disappear the, this measure and how do I arrange that? I can arrange that by putting a delta function d 4 q minus p n. Okay. Now, let us look at this when you do the integral over this expression the delta function will force q to become p n and then you recover what you have on the above line provided I put a summation over n. Okay, that is good and um, this I will write as d 4 q over 2 pi to the 2 pi to the 4, then you have e to the minus i q dot x minus y and then whatever is here the remaining factors I call them as 2 pi times rho tilde of q. Okay? That is the definition. So, what is rho tilde of q? Let me recall it here. Rho tilde of q is summation over n delta 4 q minus p n um, omega phi 0 get n and this modulus square. Is that correct? That is correct. Uh, not really. I have missed a factor of 2 pi cube. Okay, because I have a 2 pi 4 in the denominator, that 2 pi cancels 2 pi 4 and makes it 2 pi cube, okay, and that is that 2 pi cube gets cancelled with this 2 pi cube, okay, so that we get this, this line. Okay, fine, so that is definition of rho tilde q, and you as you see, rho tilde q or 2 pi times rho tilde q is basically the Fourier transform of this object on the left hand side. Okay, good. So, now I am going to argue that rho tilde q is Lorentz invariant okay. and, the, and the argument is same as we have used earlier in the case of uh, this, this factor when we were analyzing this thing for a single particle where k 10 were single particle states. Okay. It is the same kind of argument, I will just um, say in words. So, you take omega phi 0 ket n okay, and insert um, or maybe I will do it towards the end, I will instead of breaking the flow. So, let me give it as an exercise and these two lines I will write at the end to argue that this is indeed Lorentz invariant. And you see delta 4 is anyway Lorentz invariant that we already know. So, this part is Lorentz invariant I just should argue that this is also and I leave it as an exercise for the moment. Um, yeah, let me do it anyway. So, what will you do? So, you do a Lorentz transformation and that Lorentz transformation you will have some operator u of lambda or u inverse of lambda u of lambda. Okay. Lambda is the lambda, con lambda matrix contains the parameters that parameterize the transformation. Okay. So, you know you have three rotations and three boosts. So, those parameters which parameterize rotations and boost are contained in lambda and here is this operator which does that transformation and you have ket n, but then um, our vacuum omega is invariant under Lorentz transformations. So, that remains omega and then you have phi of 0, then u of lambda acting on ket n is let us denote it by this state. Okay. Did I 
yeah this is fine but also remember that um, one thing I should use is that this object or rather here phi 0 is a scalar field. So, it does not change under Lorentz transformations right that is something I have to use otherwise I do not get anywhere. So, this is true meaning if you take the field phi and do a Lorentz transformation you get the same thing you do not get anything different. Okay. So, this is what I am using. So, this is same as Okay. So, once I substitute this thing in here I arrive at this first equality and then from first equality I have arrived at the second one. So, it says that omega phi 0 ket n is same as omega phi 0 u lambda ket n okay, where u lambda ket n is a state that you get by doing a Lorentz transformation of state n. Okay. So, you see that this whatever this complex number is that is same as this complex number. So, this number is not changing under Lorentz transformations. Okay. All I am saying is omega phi 0 ket n if you look at this object and if you look at this object they have same values. So, this this is also a Lorentz, uh, Lorentz invariant object. So, rho tilde q is Lorentz invariant. So, I write rho tilde q is Lorentz invariant. Okay, that is good. Now, you see here the p n here what is p n? p n is is um, is the four momentum of ket n okay? which means the 0th component of p n that is p 0 is the energy of the state n. Okay? So, p 0 p n 0 is the energy of state ket n. Now, if that is the energy, energies are positive. Okay. So, p n 0 is always positive. Because I have taken the ground state to have the lowest uh, energy. So, any any state will have any other state would have a positive energy. Okay. So, p n 0 is positive. Now, if p n 0 is positive, okay. so p n 0 is always positive. Now, let us look at this again. You have d 4 q meaning you are integrating over all values of q. So, integral is a sum. So, you are summing over all possible q naught, q 1, q 2 and q 3. Okay. Some of these will, um, will correspond to space like q uh, q some of them them will correspond to time like q okay and we want to analyze this uh, rho tilde of q uh, and uh, say what happens if it is q is space like and if q is time like so let's look at space like first okay space like so q space like let me remind you again why i'm doing this because I have integral d 4 q which is d q 0, d q 1, d q 2, d q 3. Okay. I am summing over all this. So, when you are summing over all possible configurations, okay, there will be configurations for which uh, q 0 um, is less than 0. Okay. That is what is defined as q square meaning for some of these they will it will be space like and then there will be others for it will be for which it will be time like and also light like okay that is time like okay given the metric that we have used in our our metric is eta mu nu is 
plus minus minus minus. Okay, so let us see what we have to say if q is space like. Now, if q is space like then I can um, do a Lorentz transformation okay, and change the sign of q naught. You understand this? So, if q is space like then we can go to a frame or we can do a Lorentz transformation frame in which q naught is negative. You see even if you begin with q naught being positive you can do a Lorentz transformation and go to uh, and make q naught negative. Okay, if this is something new to you, you can also see it in this way. You, you have seen that if you have two space time points x and y, okay, which are uh, which are separated by a space like interval, okay, then which one uh, let, let us say two events occur at the space time point x and space time point y. And if the interval between x and y is space like, then which event occurred first and which event occurred later it depends on the frame from which you are looking at. Okay? And what is the 0th component of x and y? The, the, these are the corresponding times. Okay? The time at which this event ha happened at position s x and the time at which this event happened at position y. I should have been drawing here. So, let us say you have t x and t prime y. Okay, this is what I am calling as x and what I am calling as y. Now, if these two are um, separated by a sp space like interval, then you know that you cannot say which event occurred first it is not absolutely determined you it depends on the frame of reference. So, you can go to a frame of reference in which the event this event occurs earlier meaning t is smaller than t prime and you can do a Lorentz transformation and go to a frame in which t is later meaning t uh, the event at y happened earlier. Okay? And because um, q mu is a 4 vector. Okay? then its components q 0, q 1, q 2 and q 3 they transform exactly in the same manner in which the components of x mu transform. Okay? So, whatever I am saying here in, in for this here I am utilizing the fact that this interval is space like okay? and then I cannot uh, then I can go to a frame in which which one happens first. I can always uh, uh, go to a frame in which uh, x happens first or t is smaller. The corresponding statement here is uh, because they transform in the same way uh, x mu and q mu. I, if q is space like meaning q square is negative, then I will go I can go to a frame in which q naught is negative. Okay? So, if that is the I mean I can do that and because I can do that this delta function which you see here okay, ensures that that contribution vanishes. Why? Because p n or the energy component p n 0 is always positive okay, because ket n is a physical state with a physical energy. So, that is always positive and if you can make the q 0 negative then that delta function vanishes. Okay? So, you see that rho tilde of q vanishes when q is space like. So, what I have argued is rho tilde q okay, first I argued that this is a function only of q square because it is Lorentz invariant. So, um, okay, let me let me write it like this. So, rho tilde of q vanishes when q square is less than 0 okay, that it is space like. And uh, so, I can write using this rho tilde of q 
is equal to rho of q square. Here, I am emphasizing that rho can only be a function of q square, rho tilde q can be only a function of q square because it is Lorentz invariant, but then you get a contribution only when q naught is positive okay, not otherwise and you might worry that okay, this, this theta of q naught is not Lorentz invariant, but it is because you also have this statement together that rho tilde of q vanishes when q square is negative. So, which means that rho tilde of q is non vanishing only when rho tilde q or uh, when q is q square is positive q square is time like and when q square is time like then the sign of q naught can be changed okay then which happens earlier which happens later is 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 fixed and similarly using the same arguments like here it's fixed that the sign of q naught cannot be changed okay so this right hand side is indeed lorentz invariant Okay, so, I can write it in this form and I will put it back here in, in, in here in this expression. Okay, so, let me write it down omega phi x phi y omega this is d 4 q over 2 pi to the 4, then I have 2 pi times rho of q square theta q naught okay, and okay, and, and rho of q square vanishes when q square is um, space like. Okay, the, this is rho tilde of q and that is what vanishes. Okay, now, I want to write it as the following. I want to write as in, okay, let me write it in the following manner. So, you have the same thing d 4 q over 2 pi to the 4. Okay and then you have e to the minus i q dot x minus y that is this factor times 2 pi rho of mu square. I had a rho of q square, but I am writing rho of mu square delta of q square minus mu square theta of q naught and because I have written rho of mu square and I should turn it to rho of q square, I have integral over d mu square. 0 to infinity. Okay, and I am starting from 0 because rho of mu square is equal to 0 if mu square is negative okay, because rho of mu square is equal to 0 if mu square is negative. That is what I argued a little while ago that if, if you have space like uh, q square then this vanishes that is what I am imposing to make this limit 0. Okay, so, it has a support only over the positive values of mu square. Okay, that is fine. I can write it slightly better. Um, two pi to the four e to the minus i q dot x minus y 2 pi. I okay, have taken this, this. What is this? This is what we have been writing earlier as delta plus q square minus mu square. Okay, this is a familiar object. We have seen this earlier in the previous course. In the case of free field theory, we saw that this is what we called as d of x minus y. Okay? That is the propagator in free theory, well, not really the propagator, we, it, it is the d propagator you can you will get when you have the time order product here, but that is what we had. Okay? Good, so let us um, now bring in the time ordering. So, bring back 
the time ordering and then I have omega time ordered product of phi x and phi y and remember these could be composite operators not necessarily elementary fields. Okay. Then this is what integral 0 to infinity d mu square rho of mu square then you have d x y. Okay. So, you have uh, let us say theta um, x naught minus y naught meaning if x naught is greater than y naught only then this is 1 otherwise it is 0 it does not contribute plus theta of y naught minus x naught okay so this is this expression and what is this i've just inserted the time ordering okay the, uh, this is the same object so now this you remember this is the feynman propagator dfx minus y okay for the case of free theory there's the feynman propagator so, what do we have? This is integral 0 to infinity d mu square rho of mu square and let us write down the expression of Feynman propagator. It is um, integral d 4 q I am writing with q over 2 pi to the 4 um, i over q square minus m square plus i epsilon sorry not m square. So, you see here it is delta plus of q square minus mu square. So, if you go to uh, the place where we had found this propagator, it was delta plus of q square minus m square, where m was the mass parameter in the Lagrangian in the free theory. So, instead of m square, I have mu square. So, I should write q square minus mu square plus i epsilon and what e to the minus i q dot x minus y. Okay. This is the free propagator propagator in free theory with mass mu square. Okay. So, what you see is that the two point function okay, or this this object okay, is equivalent to sum over propagators in free theory, where each propagator is multiplied with the weight factor rho of mu square okay, and then you sum over all, all the mu square. So, you are summing over all of it and, and where the sum is um, over all the masses you see the, the masses and quotes there is no, no mass like mu square in this theory, but um, the result is as if this object on the left hand side is made up of free propagators and each propagator carries some mass mu and you have to sum over all those masses, but you should multiply each of that propagator with an appropriate weight rho of mu square and of course, rho of mu square will be given by the theory that you are looking at okay? only what kind of interactions and what kind of fields you have will know about rho of mu square because this part is same for whatever theory you are looking at. Okay? this is going to be the same identically whether you are looking at 5 4 theory or whatever other theory. Okay. This is going to be the same result and what changes is rho mu square when you go from one theory to another theory. This rho of mu square is called the spectral density. Okay. So, let me write that down and then we will see how to and further get information about rho of mu square. So, rho of mu square is called spectral density okay and um, just for later use this is okay i have written this earlier so no point now um, next thing to do is to analyze the contributions coming from single particle states to the spectral density so find so our that our goal is now to find the contributions 
to rho of mu square the spectral density coming from the single particle states. Okay, so, we will analyze this next. 